Before we get started in today's video, I have to warn you, this video is longer than my normal video, it does not include any cosplay or building or anything like that. It includes a gentleman with some gray in his beard rambling on about print bed surfaces and <laughs> his opinion on those. Uh, for those of you that don't want to sit through and watch the full video, here is a quick summary. Oh, and a low poly banana as well. Horrible. Don't use. Correction. Only use with blue painter's tape. Really, really good. Works great for some, not for all. That includes me. Awesome. Meh. It's okay. Spray on, spray off. This is the best stuff right here. Aquanet. I had to look at the can to remember what the name was. Magigoo, don't print without it. If you're gonna use tape, don't use this. Use this. What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about different print beds that you can use for your CR10 3D printer. Let's check it out. All right, so first and foremost, this is really all about the CR10 3D printer since it's a really widely used and very popular printer that's available today. It's also my primary printer and I also have purchased a lot of different print bed options for my variety of CR10s that I have there. And I wanna share some of my experiences with you guys and some that I think you should purchase, some that you should avoid, and uh, some that are just okay to use. So the default that comes with your CR10 is this uh, piece of glass that for the most part, for whatever reason, never seems to be perfectly flat and level. Uh, if you are still using this, if you have a CR10 and you're still using this and it works for you, bravo. Bravo, you are one of the few. Uh, most people end up swapping this out, either having another piece of glass cut or using mirrors or some other print bed surface. And if I'm honest, this is probably what I used for the first five months or so of using my CR10 before picking up a mirror and printing on a mirror surface. The primary problem with printing on a piece of glass like this that came directly with your CR10 is that it probably isn't perfectly level. Uh, you can get a new piece of glass cut at a local hardware store at Lowe's or typically Home Depot. You might want to call ahead of time to see if they can actually cut glass for you. And it's really cheap if you want to get a new piece of glass cut. I think it was only $6 when I had a new piece of glass cut. You can also alternatively get a 12 by 12 picture frame and use the glass from that. And it should be hopefully level as well, but it might not be. The other challenge with all of this is your print bed for your CR10 might not be perfectly level either. So you might have to lay down some sheets of paper or tape in order to fine tune the spots where it's not perfectly level. I'm not gonna get into all of this. I really wanna stick to the beds and what's available out there for you guys. So let's check out the next option. So a really common one that people turn to after using their glass uh, build plate is what I mentioned before, a mirror. So here I'll turn this over for a second, not make it super odd that I'm showing the other portion, this side of the mirror. Uh, what people will do though is print on a mirror. And the reason is that this is perfectly level surface. You are able to very easily see if the mirror is defective or not because it'll give you a proper reflection on it. Uh, the other beautiful thing about printing on a 12 by 12 mirror like this is that it's pretty dang cheap. Your local hardware store, Walmart, uh, should carry a pack, something similar to this here, that I believe this was a six pack that was maybe $20. That's a lot of build surfaces, and I've been using the same mirror on one of my CR10s for over six months now without any sort of issues. So uh, the, the mileage should last a very long time with these. If you happen to crack them, you can easily swap it out for another one. If you need to lay down some tape with them, you know, lay down some tape and keep printing with them. If you want to use some other adhesives with those, and I'll get into that very briefly at the end of this video as well, some of the adhesives that I use when printing, works great on those as well. I do know some people do just completely bare mirror, super clean as well. I've tried that once or twice and it works okay for me. It's all about dialing in your printer and your leveling, fine tuning the perfect printing temperature for the material that you're printing with, and 
uh, it should work really nice. I highly, highly, highly recommend, out of everything I'm going to talk about today, if there's one thing you try out, it's picking up a set of mirrors and printing with mirrors. It works surprisingly very, very well. The next printing surface that I want to talk to you guys about is this Mamaru Bot build plate. It's this sort of lime green, off shade of green build surface. Uh, that has a bit of a texture to one side of it and is completely smooth on the other. Uh, I've had mixed results with printing with this. Um, I've probably shifted away from using this. I would really have liked to have used this. Uh, currently, I'll have, and I, I should mention, I'll have some links to where I purchased these, so over on Amazon or other sites where you can check these out. Uh, they do have these available in multiple different sizes. Again, this has worked fairly well for me, I would say on and off. It's it's a, a bit of give and take with this particular build surface. What's supposedly supposed to be nice about this build surface is that you should not need to use any sort of uh, hairspray or glue or anything like that to get your prints to adhere to the, the, to the build surface. Um, that again is hit or miss for me. <laughs> uh, maybe it's fluctuating temperatures on the room that I'm printing in, but, uh, I, you know, I typically have to get this up to about 60 plus degrees in order for it to stick well. And then supposedly it's supposed to just really kind of pop off as soon as, uh, it's done printing. Uh, in the past when I've printed with this, I've gotten a lot of curling or the actual print has slipped from the bed as well. Uh, I know a lot of people over on the CR10 Facebook group, uh, we're jumping in on this. That's when I purchased these. I know a number of people had issues with the actual build plate, or not build plate, the build surface here, not coming perfectly level. Uh, those were, I believe, refunded and replaced. I actually haven't had any issues with that. I have two of these. And uh, again, use it on and off sparingly. I probably haven't used this in the last four months or so, though. Now, this beautiful blue beast here is from th3dstudio.com. Uh, this is, if you're over on the CR10 Facebook group, you'll know Tim is pretty active over on the CR10 Facebook group and providing, you know, solutions and offerings and uh, uh, updates and firmware updates for your CR10 and all the different machines and is constantly tinkering with those. He actually produced his own build surface and I really like this. Uh, what's really cool about this particular build plate that he produces and sells is that uh, one, it actually works really well. Uh, and again, it's one of these that you don't need to apply any sort of extra glue or sprays or anything like that to it. It really sticks nicely to it. It actually reminds me of a build tack type surface, but maybe not as expensive. Uh, also, I like the blue, which is very cool. But anyways, uh, <laughs> what what is also very cool is that he has these available in all of the different sizes that the CR10 comes in. Um, and then what's also nice is that it's not actually a full hard build surface. So if you have a, a mirror that you're using today that you know is perfectly flat and you're printing with and it works great with, this is actually a print bed sticker. So you peel off the back, the tape that is on the back of the print bed, and you apply it to the print bed surface. On my CR10 S4, so this is for the CR10. Um, for the CR10 S4, which is the larger version of that, that's the only thing I print on for that printer, and it works absolutely great for me. So highly recommend this. Uh, there is a code if you want to get a little 10% discount if you're interested in purchasing one of these from him. I'll have a link down below to that. It's Uncle 10, gets you 10% off that. There's no kickback to me or anything like that. Um, but I actually just really like using the build plates and have enjoyed, and I think I have three or four of these that I've bought from them. <laughs> I've gotten a little crazy on buying build plates for these different machines, to be honest. A little, a, just a little over the top. So the last one that I really wanted to talk with you guys about today before talking about uh, different print bed adhesions is the Anycubic Ultra Base. I was super, super hopeful for this because on my Anycubic i3 Mega, I love that print bed. I have zero issues printing anything on it. It's st everything sticks absolutely great to it. And I was really hoping this would be the same solution, but for my CR10. And 
Unfortunately, this thing, I have the hardest time getting prints to properly stick to this thing. I have to print it at about 70, the bed I have to heat it up to about 70 degrees, which if you have a CR-10, you know that takes a very long time to get up to 70 degrees. And uh, it, I still have issues with curling or prints lifting off of the bed before they're completely finished. I, I just have had really a difficult time printing with this. That said, um, <laughs> by applying some other adhesives to this bed, which you're not supposed to have to do, uh, I can get great print results while using this print bed. <laughs> So uh, over the last probably two or three weeks, that's what I have been using is this print bed, but I have been putting on Magigoo. This stuff smells like feet. I won't lie. It smells like feet, <laughs> but, but it works absolutely great. Uh, what's the beauty of this product is the whole idea is that you should be able to apply this. It comes in, the whole concept of this is uh, it comes in this little applicator tube here where it's got a little spongy top and you just squeegee it onto your print bed surface. So whether you're printing on glass or a mirror and then let your bed heat up and then print directly onto this little Magigoo paste and your print just sticks to it. But as soon as the print bed cools down, your print's done, Print, let the print bed cool down, your print will just pop right off. It works like flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. Love this stuff, absolutely love this stuff, but it does smell, it's got the biggest funk to it when I, let me, let me oh, oh, like think, think smart food popcorn or like uh, your feet in a sweaty sock for like a full day while running. <laughs> I love these guys by the way, but uh, yeah, it smells a little funky. Well, while, I'm, while I'm talking about adhesives and whatnot, the other big one that I use is Aquanet. This stuff you can pick up for a dollar at Dollar Tree or Dollar General. Uh, yeah, I had probably two years ago bought, I think five bottles of this and have still not gone through all of them. This stuff seems to last forever and it works great, especially if you're printing with glass or a mirror surface and just spray on a little bit before your print and your prints will magically stick and then you can just pop them off with your little spatula after the print is done. But it doesn't, after the print bed cools, unlike Magigoo, this, it's still kind of stuck to the print bed. With Magigoo, it just kind of pops right off. It is kind of magical. Uh, but yeah, this is also a great alternative as well. If you haven't tried hairspray, I highly recommend Aquanet. I honestly haven't tried any other hairspray on a print bed surface, so. Can't really comment on that. All right, the last thing I want to talk with you guys about uh, on print beds and your surfaces is tape. Yes, tape. Uh, do not use this crappy tape that came with your CR-10 from China. This stuff, I mean, it works, but it's, it's crap in my opinion. Do yourself a favor, go to Home Depot and buy a really fat roll of 3M blue painter's tape. I believe it is five dollars maybe less than five dollars for a it's a really thick roll uh this has probably lasted me the last six plus months if i have a really hard time getting a print for whatever reason to stick i have no issues jumping back on to the tape train my taped bed is the best print bed out of all the print beds i won't lie this is my default for the last three years plus of doing 3D printing and 60% of the time, it works all the time. Something something like that. I can't remember how that quite goes. Uh, but it, no, it, seriously, it works really well. And even then, if I still have, for whatever reason, if I'm having difficulties, I'll spray a little hairspray on top of the, on the blue painter's tape and that stuff sticks and it's not going anywhere. The problem is with using blue painter's tape that your part is literally like, it is adhesed, adhesed, adhesed. Uh, it is really sealed to the blue painter's tape and you're gonna have to scrape that sucker off of this build plate. But it works great and I have no issues using it. I know for some, for some odd reason, blue painter's tape is shunned on upon by the printing community. I love it. I love it, it works great for me. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share some of the options that I use for build surfaces for my CR-10. I've posted a lot of those on 
um, uh, Instagram and Twitter, and I've gotten a number of comments of what I've thought about those, and I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time now, but I wanted to share it with you guys. Let me know what you're printing with. Um, I would love to know that. If you're printing with something different, maybe the lock head, lock bed, can't remember the orange build plate. I've yet to try that one. Um, and let me know. You know, again, I'm always open to testing out new print bed surfaces. All right, this has been a long rambling video. It hasn't been cosplay related. It hasn't been movie, video game prop related. I, it's not my norm here. If you were looking for technical info on these printer beds, I apologize. Uh, you need to turn into 3D printing nerd, maybe Maker's Muse or Maker Noob. And uh, yeah, the, that's where you should be turning in for your uh, really technical printing information. You come to me for the fun stuff or uh, just casual printing information because I don't know what I'm doing half the time anyways. But hey, thanks again for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye now. And by the way, in one of my last videos on the Black Panther statue that I did, uh, a lot of people were asking about the low poly banana. I'll have a link down below to the file for that as well. It's just a really fun print. If you have some yellow PLA and you want to do a banana for scale when you're printing anything, this is a really good option for you if you don't have a banana handy or if you just want one to uh, use as a telephone. Well, that's what we, my boys and I use it for.